Hey everyone, Retire on Dividends here. I want to give an update video to my options and swing trading journey. Uh, this time it's a little different because I have, I'm watching my one-year-old at the same time. So let's see how this goes. Uh, but first, we'll cover the options trades that I did. Um, as you know, I only trade options right now on TSLL. I am currently performing the wheel strategy. And all that means is basically... I'm only on the sell side. I sell puts and I sell calls, okay? <laughs> and here he wants to be in the video. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, right now I'm in between both and uh, I'll show you what happened this week. So this week started, what, May 6th, right? So basically what I did on Monday, the stock was up, the Tesla was up, which meant TSLL was up. It was actually up to 842. So I sold a, a call for a strike price of 850, which at the time was 0.95% out of the money. And that was for, um, at the time, five trading days. I actually ended up closing it on the 9th. I closed it early because it only cost me a penny to close it. And the reason I did that, the reason I closed it on the 9th, which was the Thursday, is just in case Tesla flipped green, then I had the 100 shares to trade calls on again. Or even Friday, if it flipped green, I was able to sell a call again. Instead of waiting till the end you know, of, of day Friday, and then I have to wait till Monday to sell calls, um, assuming it wasn't you know, assigned. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. How much did I make on that? Basically, um, you know, obviously when I closed out with the penny, I kept 96% of the premium. But I made 32 bucks, which ended up being um, a return on investment of 1.27% uh, per day. So if you take that and you times it by 365, that's 462% annualized, which, you know, I'll take that any day of the week. What else did I do? Well, after Monday, Tesla did nothing except go down. So as you can see, on the 7th, it went to 796, so I sold a put for 750. Um, and I got 40, 41 dollars for that. I don't know why my one year old is like all over this, he was, it wasn't bothering me before, but anyway, um, that comes to 117 percent annualized yield, which is not bad. And then I it kept going down on Friday, right? I have something on Friday here, yep. May 10th on Friday, I sold another put when it was at 7-Eleven. I sold it with a strike of $7 um, and I got 36 bucks for that. And, you know, so, and that yielded about 134% annually, which again, pretty good, right? However, look, if you look on the bottom, I have TSLL close price. It actually closed in the $6 range, which is crazy. So since it was going down this week, um, I also decided to close, um, did I, what else did I close? This $9 one? Yeah, the $9 one. This was previously open. Um, it was set to expire on Friday at a $9 call. I closed it for three cents um, and I closed it early, again, because I wanted to use the shares in case TSLL decided to flip the other direction, okay? All right, so let's see what it all looks like together. Actually, before that, I think I have the totals. Yeah, so for the month of May so far, I have made about $167 in premium income. I want to try to beat every month. Uh, April was a pretty good month, though. That's going to be tough to beat. Um, I don't want to you know, be, make too many stupid moves in trying to do that, so i got to be smart about it. All right, so right now, I got assigned one call, okay? And I had to sell it for $8. And since it's first in, first out, you know, my first purchase of TSLL was actually $9.50. So I'm showing right now in my, in my account a loss of $150 on capital gains. However, my average cost basis on all of these puts is $7.83. So as long as I get assigned above $7.83 on all of these calls, all, all nine of them, not calls, contracts, then I'm good. Then in the end, it'll be a net profit uh, when it comes to capital. I eliminated all the other columns to show the cost basis based on premium because I didn't want to overcomplicate it. So hopefully this makes things a little easier.
All right. So what else? All right. So that one got assigned. It's pretty much gone. Um, so I now I have eight left. Okay. So out of the eight, I have what two, four, five calls that are pending. Oh no, one. Yeah, one. Uh, actually, the the seven fifty that expires five ten. Let me go back to the sheet. Go, go, go. Seven fifty. Go. Where is it? There you go. Expires five ten. Expired worthless. That should be the note. Expired worthless. So yeah, I didn't even update my stuff yet. When I say expire worthless, worthless to the buyer, okay? Because, you know, they're the ones on the other side of it that paid money for it, and to them, they got nothing out of it. For me, I sold the call, I got the premium, and since it closed a below 750, it did not get assigned. So it expired worthless, and I got my shares back. So this one, I could just do this. Boom, get rid of that, boom, okay. So I actually only have four of the eight um, contracts on pending calls. None expire next week, so nothing exciting heading into next week. However, I have four, 400 shares that I would like to sell calls on. However, I need TSLL to move up a little though. Right now it's in the high sixes. So selling an $8 call at a high six, eh. Again, I could do 750 as long as my average, you know, assigned call is, is above my average cost basis. So right now, I only got assigned eight. Obviously, if I do like a 750 and I get assigned, it'll be like 775. So then I'll have to do another eight to get the average up, if you get what I'm saying. All right, let's move on. Total income for the week. Uh, the week of 510, I made $106. How does that compare to last week? Last week, I did better, made 182, 129 the week before, 86, and so on and so forth. So um, capital needed. Yeah, I didn't even update this either. See, I'm slacking. So let me update my yield formula. So how much capital, well, I, could just, I guess I could show you guys. How much capital did I use to make $106 for this week? So you saw these were the three transactions, right? Yeah. So how much capital did I use? Yeah. So I have a column for fronted amount, right? So for the call, I, I do, it's what the amount of the stock was at the time I sold the call. So that to me, I take the stock price times 100. That's basically what I put up. And then for the puts, I'm essentially, I am putting up a collateral of 750 and 700. So if I highlight these three amounts, I get, I get 2292, okay? So if I go to income and plug in 2292, all right, I yielded 4.62%. That's pretty good. That's for a week, all right? That's not bad. 4.62% yield for one week. That is pretty damn good. And then I have this last thing, which takes my rate of return average, which is right now it's 255%. That's what I've been averaging on an annualized basis so far. So, you know, assuming I trade with $20,000 in total, I can make $51,000 in income if I can keep that average rate of return. So, and that comes to about $980 weekly. I would love to get to that point. However, I'm taking my time and I will build up and I will get there. And that's gonna be, again, pretty sweet income along with a high yield income. So if I can make a thousand on options income and let's say two to 3,000 on you know, high, high yield income sooner than later, it'll be pretty sweet. All right, let's go to swing trade. That's it on my options update. Oops, sorry about that. So hopefully that made sense. Um, let's go to so what happened? I mean, I was underwater on the swing trades. I got too greedy, as you know, from the last update. So I had to wait, not buy anything and sell out when I was in a profit on, on any of these. So 
that finally happened and I got out. And now my rule of thumb is three funds at a time. No more, no more than that. So right now I'm in three funds. I'm in CONL, I'm in TMF, and I just got in Gooks, which is Google. So let's see what that looks like. Let's see what happened for the week. TSLT, I did not get any action. CONL, I own, let's just say way too much, right? I own a lot. Um, if you look, I actually have invested 30... 700 and I haven't been able to sell any my original buy price was $81 I mean and my my last purchase price was 42 so basically you know this one as soon as I'm in the profit I gotta get out because it's very very risky I'll get back in obviously but I just bought two you know at the high way at the high SOXL I was able to sell this week for a profit uh how much if I zoom in, I could probably, uh, no, nothing works. All right, it was about 21 bucks. Again, not, mu not much, but I'm playing it safe to get out of these funds. Apple, nothing going on there. TNA, nothing there. MSFX, uh, made some profit this week. Um, how much? Not much, 20 bucks. Again, I'll start making some real money soon. I'm just, I got to get out of this slump here. NVDX, I made some profits this week. How much? <laughs> 99 bucks, which is pretty damn good. <laughs> All right, so what else? My son is trying to touch the screen. TMF, I'm kind of stuck in. I own a whole bunch of shares. I have about 3,300 put into this, but um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. And then, sorry, he's climbing on me as I'm talking. What else we got? Total profit for Erty, made about 91 bucks. Again, Gooks, I just got into, because uh, I saw it did dip on Friday. Bit two, I got nothing, and Yin, I got nothing, so. Again, outstanding. Um, I'm still in Conal. Got to get out of that one. Way too much money in it. TMF, I got a lot of money in it. Um, and then, you know, once I can get out of them, it's a really like a fresh restart. My averages are just too high on them. I want to make a profit, small profit, and get out. I have 7,600 currently invested in all of my swing trading positions, which I'm fine with that amount in general because um, I still have plenty of cash to average down as long as I need to. You know, maybe like 10,000 or so. All right, so for the month of May, as you can see, it's a really slow month. I made $232 so far swing trading, uh, but hopefully, you know, coin can turn it around. So Conal, again, Conal is a 2X leverage fund of coin. So hopefully it, you know, it flips, flips green. Now I'm chasing him around the kitchen. What a, what a video. All right. Um, so that's the update on the swing trading. That's the update on the options trading. Sorry for the background noise, but I got to do what I got to do. Make the video when I can. Um, so that is the update. If you have any questions or concerns, uh, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to, to answer. If you want to discuss live, please do join the Discord. I have an options trading channel, which is very active. And there's a lot of smart people there, way smarter than me who can you know, assist you, if not, I can as well. Um, and we could talk about options all day, every day in there. So um, yeah, the Discord link should be uh, attached to my channel. However, it's, if it's expired, I apologize, just let me know and I can update the link, sometimes it expires. But um, anyway, so that's the update. None of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So if you had fun and you were entertained and you enjoy these weekly updates, Please hit the like button, greatly appreciated. This is probably one of my um, least favorite videos for the community based on views, likes, et cetera. But for the, I guess, feedback I get, people do enjoy it. So as long as like, there's even like 10 of you out there that comment that you enjoy it, I will keep doing it if it helps you, okay? Anyway, guys, uh, let me go attend to the crazy one-year-old um, who's, you know, asking for my attention, but, um, yeah, that's it. Tune in next week. Hopefully I have some, some higher profits. 
some good options income, we could talk from there. We need Tesla to recover though, at least for me. What are you guys trading, by the way? Let me know in the comments. Are you trading TNA? Again, I've been, I've been wanting to get in TNA, but I got I to gotta wait. Maybe get some more capital first. But anyway, guys, I'm out of here. Have a great weekend. Talk to you next week. Later.